Hey everybody and welcome, my name is Carlo Libertini and thanks for joining me in this video. We're going to look at some creative drum replacement techniques here utilizing Melodyne. Now this will work in any DAW of your choice, regardless if it's Studio One Pro or Pro Tools or Logic, you name it. And what I mean by creative is simple. I've got a session here. This is a song that I'm writing and working on for my group. And I wanted to add something unique to the drums, to the song in general. And we're going to do that using Melodyne. So let's get started. Let's take a quick listen to what we're working with so far in my demo. Get some bass and some drum tracks. All right. Let's take a look at the session and here we go. Now, I'm gonna solo the kick drum. Let's take a listen because I wanna start there. We're really capturing the strike, the hit of the beater. But what I wanna do is something really interesting with this. I wanna use this to trigger something really beefy and low for an effect. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. Now, to get started, I'm going to select this kick drum track here, the kicked drum track that's capturing the beater mic. And in your DAW, it might be a little bit different, but here in Studio One, I could choose several ways to open this in Melodyne. One could be just to right click and choose Edit with Melodyne, and the application opens because we are using Audio Random Access, which Studio One is capable of doing. Now, what we're looking at here is the drum track, which Melodyne correctly, obviously, identified under algorithm as percussive. It's just a percussive element. There's no melodic value to it. Let's take a listen. Now, this is where the real fun begins. I'm gonna show you a technique that's worked for me, and hopefully you can begin utilizing this yourself in your own session soon. All right, check this out. Now with the selector tool here, the main tool, I'm gonna choose the first beat right here. Now I'm going to right click and choose under select special, select same beat in all bars. Now, as you can see, it's highlighting the first beat in every bar. Next, come up to edit and under special, we can invert that note selection. And just by pressing delete on the keyboard, I now have just the first initial drum strikes. All right. Uh, one tip I'll give you is you could duplicate the track if you wanted to keep the other information intact. Uh, so that's one way you can also, you know, approach this. What I'm looking to do is just transform this beater into something new and different. Okay, so now that we have that, obviously, I'm going to come up to track and choose add an instrument track, and we're going to drag this down. And just like that, I'm going to rename it for good housekeeping. And we'll call it kick, um, kick effects there, something creative, right? All right. Next, there's nothing here triggering this yet. So let me open up my browser and you can do this with any virtual instrument that you want that you have in your session. But I'm gonna take Addicted Drums and drag it onto the track like this. Now, what I wanna do is for that first attack, for that first strike, I wanna to come to my kit and I'm gonna load here on the Deflex track. Let's go to load and let's take a listen. Now you can pick anything you want here, but, oh, listen to that. There's one of my favorites. I'm going to choose OK. Now we've loaded that, but we want this MIDI note to trigger that uh, drum that we loaded in Addictive Drums. So now I'm going to double click here and we're opening up our MIDI editor now. Now there's several ways to do this. Right now it, I correctly identified it as percussive here, or you could work in the keyboard mode if you want. It's totally up to you. And let me zoom in to show you that. Here we go, the first kick beats from everything that we transferred from audio to MIDI. Now, because I want this to be an effect, I'm gonna select all of them, and right before I forget, I'm gonna choose, right click on the velocity, choose velocity, and I'm gonna set them all to 80%. I want this to be consistent effect throughout the track. But we needed to trigger the right track, so I'm gonna grab my note, and 
move it up or down to find the tone that we want it to trigger. There's a lot we can do here, right? Oh, I like that. That's a nice hit. That's a really nice hit. Now, if I wanted to, under pitch, you could also choose the note that you want right here. And let's solo this. I like that. So for the first beat, on every bar, we're gonna have a big kick sound. All right, now let's go back to our window and because I really wanna enunciate this, let's take it one step further and under inserts, I'm gonna pop in one of my favorite right here. Let's go to iHeart New York 2 and then on my new kick that we're triggering, I'm gonna choose drums and let's take a basic kick one. This should make it really pop. Oh yeah, you feel that? So if you're following along, obviously we've taken the beater, the that sharp transient from the kick drum, and we used Melodyne to select just the first hit of every bar, inverted that, deleted what we didn't want, and converted that to MIDI, inserted any instrument that you want, in this case, a big booming kick on the first strike of every beat, and this is where we are. Let's take a listen so far. Let's bring our overheads in. Try listening to this in headphones. You can really feel that kick now. Oh yeah. So as I mentioned before, you could now, if you wanted here, since we took this original kick drum track and we edited it, if you want, you can select that track and you could actually remove Melodyne now since we're done using it in this case. Because what that's going to do is we use that track to create the data that we wanted. But if you want to, remember I said you could also duplicate the track or we could just remove Melodyne in this case and go back to using the beater. So let's mix that in with the overheads now. Oh yeah. Isn't that how loud that is? I love it. Never get tired of these kind of creative tricks using Melodyne and your favorite DAW. But there are other ways to approach this, obviously. And another one that we're going to do here, for example, in our snare top, let's take a listen. Typical snare top. We've got a little bit of the, obviously, the um, cymbals going on there and a nice whack with the snare. Now, let's try that method I mentioned by duplicating the track completely. And let's rename the duplicate track to snare top dupe. Good housekeeping is always a good idea. So now we have two snare tops, a duplicate and the original. Uh, let's take the duplicate. And what I'll do now is under mix, let's insert a gate. Now what this gate is going to do is remove the symbols and just leave the strongest hits that we want. Uh, this is prior to audio to MIDI conversion. The reason why is because if you don't do this, everything gets a MIDI note and it may confuse you. But by applying a gate and capturing just the snare hits that we want to keep for our audio to MIDI conversion, it's gonna make things cleaner and your workflow a lot more flexible and faster and creative. All right, so I soloed the snare dupe and let's set our gate. Easy peasy. All right, now that that's done, uh, one thing we can do here is now select that snare dupe in Studio One. It'll be different in your DAW. I could right click and go up to event and I could bounce this to a new track. So here, and I'll remove the old track. Let me remove that one. Here we have a very clean snare drum hit. And we use the gate and we printed it. Next, let's bring this into Melodyne. And because it detected it as polyphonic, it's probably because it's a snare drum, which means it's harmonically rich in timbre. Now, if this happens to you, simply come up to algorithm, 
and choose percussive and redetect, and you'll see we have a nice, clean snare drum hits. Now, this is a good point in your workflow to double check. For example, I see a small hit right here. I want to know what that is. And you can just, you could use this the um, main tool if you want to audition it. If you can click on it. It's a very, very soft snare. Very, very soft snare. All right. Uh, so let's zoom out. It is a snare and we do want to keep it. Uh, actually, while we're here, why don't I grab my amplitude tool and we could actually increase the volume of that snare. So when we convert it to MIDI, we'll have a better velocity note for it. Okay. Now, if you're following along, let's go to track and do the same thing we did before. Insert an instrument track, drag that snare drum track down and voila. Now we have pure MIDI snare to MIDI. Let's bring this up and we'll call it uh, snare to MIDI. But we need to insert an instrument track, but it doesn't have to be an instrument. What I want is some kind of an effect here. So let's bring Addicted Drums 2 in again for our creative drum work here. And let's go back to kit. And now in the flex track, these are zones where you can load uh, any kind of instrument that you want. Let's see what we can uh, find here. Let's get a nice snare. Something interesting. Ooh. I like that. Hit OK. But what's interesting about creative drum editing like we're doing here is I loaded that, but as I'm scrolling around through the hits, I may find something different that works for you. There's no rules. All right, so let's open this up in our MIDI editor. And you remember the trick I showed you with the velocities. I'm going to I'm going to select them all, right click on the velocity, choose the velocity parameter dialog box, and then I'm going to set them all equally like that. I'm going to switch back to my key, my uh, MIDI note view, and let's start, let's have a little bit of fun now. I'm going to elongate them just a little bit. Let's select them one more time, and now let's find the note that does it for us. Let's go up. I think it's up. Basically, what I'm doing is also auditioning hits that I want. That's a good one right there. Okay, let's check that out. So we're adding a lot of creative different elements to this. Utilizing the existing analog drums that it's a real drummer that we recorded. And we're taking some of those tracks, transforming them with Melodyne and applying a virtual instrument to them for a more creative feel. Now we did quite a bit with the kick drums and we're doing quite a bit now with the snare. Let's bring in some of these elements and let's hear the whole track together from where we're at. I love it. Let's bring in, so far, I've, I've got a bass drum track. Uh, let's, I mean, a bass guitar track. Let's listen to how the whole song's evolving for this demo I'm writing. So got some extra MIDI notes in there. Let me open up our snare to MIDI, as you can see right here. And with the power of editing, we could delete a couple of those. Let's take it from here. One more time from the top. And remember, we have done quite a bit of creative fun and creative work here 
utilizing Melodyne, Audio Random Access, Audio Timidity, and virtual instruments that you may already have to help elevate and transform your drums and make something really creative and fun for yourself. Let's take it from the top one more time. I love combining real drums with unique samples like this. And it's the process I'm really trying to show you here. You don't have to go this elaborate or this far, or you could go further. It's up to you. And there you have it. Some creative drum replacing here, utilizing Melodyne. Uh, check out the links below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Visit Celimony.com for more information. And thank you for watching. My name's Carlo Libertini. Stay busy and stay creative.